You're watching Calf Kick Sports Podcast. I was doing stuff in my backyard real quick. How's the backyard yeah. looking? How's everything back there? That's good. I'm a beekeeper, so I got a bee colony. I, I got to check on, you know. Oh, we're going to skip the intro, man. Tell me about your beekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, during the pandemic, I just got into beekeeping and, and growing um, plants. So I, I, I grow a few exotic, you know, um, fruit trees in my back. And then uh, I started beekeeping. I followed this guy around for two weeks and then got my own colony. And then after that, I bought another one. Then I caught like nine of them. Um, and then I had like, at one point I had 14 colonies, right? Then wow. all, of them, all of them, but one died. Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Man. Yeah, I was, I was I I was getting a lot of honey, but you know, um, there's a thing called varroa mites, and yeah. they're destroying um, bee colonies worldwide, and uh, that's what got my colonies. Oh, brother, is that is that something that you feel like is uh, it, it's just happened like post retirement? You know, you mentioned during the pandemic, or is it just literally just post uh, during the pandemic? Yeah, pretty much like during the pandemic, literally. Um, two weeks before January, I mean, before val Valentine's Day, because on Valentine's Day is when I got my bees. Um, I just, I went on YouTube, watched a few videos, looked up the nearby beekeeping association, joined it, the, joined them, and then followed the, um, the owner of, or the leader of the president of the, um, of the association for two weeks. I shadowed them, went to some bee colonies, got stung a few times. We did a removal. And then I just went ahead and bought a colony off of one. And then I bought another one and I fell in love with it. Man, it's so cool. So that that sounds like an awesome hobby. And it's a good thing that you're doing for the environment as well. How many years away are we from King Mo Lawal honey on the market? Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> a, a while. Well, the thing is, like, I just do it for myself. So the honey I have is like I medicate it with some with some certain things. Like what? Psychedelic. <laughs> yeah, I, I I mix it with mushrooms, like psilocybin mushrooms, or or I make cannabis honey, or I make hot honey. So I'll I'll make like a, my own hot sauce where I'll, I'll get some um, apple cider vinegar, white vinegar, and some peppers, and add to the honey. So it's a hot honey. I'm I'm into all these things. This sounds yeah. so cool. That it, it is there um, is there like a mentality from your side of like actually wait hang on when you're speaking to the association do you introduce yourself as like King Mo of like you my name's Muhammad <laughs> you can call me King Mo though. <laughs> no, I just when I when I when I joined when I joined them they were looking at me like I was kind of weird and then somebody asked him about, about my ears and I told him I wrestled yeah and then they just kept on asking me questions and finally. MMA popped up and I told them I fought and then they thought it was cool and then they thought it was funny that you know that these things hurt me I can't take them but they just they don't wear it like they just go out there and beekeep without a veil or they might just wear a veil I wear a full suit I learned the first time because I was kind of, I was trying to copy my mentor and we did a removal and he didn't have a suit on so I didn't have one <laughs> So I was like, cool, I, but I, I wasn't handling, handling the bees. So then when we came back to my spot, he wanted to go into my new colony. And I was telling them, I was like, man, my new colony looks kind of aggressive. And he's like, yeah, because they're Africanized killer bees. They're like Africanized bees. Yeah, all the bees in South Florida, for the most part, they're wild or Africanized. They're, they're, they're aggressive. Oh, oh God. So okay. he went, you know, like the African killer bees. Mm -hmm. These these bees down here have the genetics, share the same genetics with them. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, I'm with you. So he went into my colony and uh, popped it up. And I was behind him and he got stung. He got lit up. Bam, bam. And then I got lit up. Bam, bam, bam. And I'm talking about one went in my nose, stung me in my nostril, stung me in my lip, stung me in my eye, my ear. Whoa. I have pictures somewhere, but right. my whole face, like, I had to go corner somebody, right? But luckily... We had to wear masks. So I was wearing a mask everywhere I went because my face was swollen. It was terrible. Oh, what's, man. Uh, what's harder, yeah, Mo? Uh, beekeeping, fighting, or, uh, or, or wrestling? <laughs> what's the hardest out of all three of them? Man, you know what? They're all different. Because with pro wrestling, 
you have to read the crowd and you have to work with your partner and tell a story. Um, with MMA, depending on where you're from, if you're overseas, you you stick to a game plan, you win, your country loves you. Yeah. If you're in America and you win too much without being exciting, they'll hate you. So depending in, M M in MMA, the goal is to just go out there, follow a game plan, win, and be exciting when you can be. But if you can't be, just hope that your country backs you. So, you know. Yeah. And then uh, with the beekeeping, it's different because you're trying to help some bees get better. You can't control the bees, but you can help the colony. For instance, if a queen is laying a bad pattern or, or she's laying too many drone eggs, I'll kill her and replace her. Or the colony will kill her and replace, replace her. Um, if the colony gets too, gets too overcrowded, then they'll lay a, a new queen egg and that new queen will fly off and take half the colony with her. And that's what you call a swarm. Oh, so when you hear a swarm of bees is when a new queen is hatched and leaves the old colony to start a new colony. I had no flipping idea of that, man. Yeah. <laughs> Learn something every day, man. Um, yeah. Changing gears, though, obviously, Mo, you've had a very story. I mean, I'm trying, I'm trying to change gears here from the beekeeping, but I'm, I, I love to hear it. But like, just changing gears from that slightly, you've had a very storied career. Um, you know, you've beat Yuri Prohaska, Gegard Musasi. You've been some legends in the sport, Quentin Rampage Jackson. Um, what's your favorite moment in MMA, like of your MMA career? Honestly, I don't have one. Um... My career is my career. It was a job. You know, I had fun doing it. Um, I get a chance to look back on it, you know, and it was fun. You know, it was painful. I had a lot of surgeries, overcame a lot of adversity with the injuries and the staph infection. But it was fun, man. You know, I had a chance to go out there and travel and fight, win titles, lose some fights, get knockouts, get knocked out. But never got submitted, never got yeah. submission. But, you know, I, I had fun. You know, so, you know, um, I learned a lot. And uh, I feel like my experiences in MMA will help me with my life experiences as well. Yeah. So all right, I, I watched the uh, the interview you did a couple of, well, two or three years ago with Ariel Hawani, where you're like, um, I'm retired, yeah, because I don't actually want to hurt anyone anymore. I've lost that killer instinct. And you actually even mentioned, yeah, watching the Rory interview, where he goes, look, I don't actually want to hurt people anymore. Um, do you feel like has that has that has that gone completely that competitive edge? Do you feel uh, like we go back into you know just a one time fight? Nah, nah, I competed enough, and one time for what? what? What do I have to prove? And like, what and what do I want to do? You know, I feel like if you're gonna do something, like do it, have a reason to do it. Now, like right now, I've been retired for like three years. And for me to just be like, you know what? I have the itch. Like, yeah. No, nah, like, I don't have the itch. And I'll probably never get it again. If I do, then I'll just go and spar or hit the bag. You know, like, yeah. what's the point of coming back and trying to, like, prove something? Like, you already did that in your prime. What's the, like, when you're past your prime, all you can do is prove, it, prove, prove things to yourself. But you can do that. You can do that with your partner without trying to get hurt. You can go out there and spar or go to a wrestling, like, go to a college college wrestling pro class and try to wrestle yeah, some kids yeah. or grapple or join an MMA gym and just stay in shape. Um, what's the point of trying to damage somebody, try to hurt somebody when when you're older, really, you should be trying to teach somebody how to do something productive with their life. And if it's to help somebody become a better fighter, then then be that. But, yeah. you know, if you're, if, if you're, there's some guys out there like that still can compete like, um, like uh, um, Lee Main, Jordan Main's dad. Yeah. He's a different animal. You know, he's, competing and he trains hard I, I went to the gym like four or five years ago and he still gets gets after it and he coaches and he has the passion but with me i was a fighter first you know lee was a fighter but he's a he did both did both at the same time for understand and his son does it i don't have no sons <laughs> so my thing is like once i'm done once i said i'm done i see my body um feel deteriorated and i've seen how i walk um i want to be able to walk normal yeah, I want them to be able to talk normal and uh, be able to remember things, you know. And I feel like 
the way I was going, it's time to let it go. But and we talked to so many different fighters who have like so many different attitudes towards retirement. Like, like it's weird. It must be weird for like all of us. Like we watched Shogun Hua grow up and fighting and the guy's still fighting. And that doesn't seem right. Like, and then you have other guys like, like yourself or Ensign in a way who are very comfortable with the idea of like, I succeeded in my career and what I want to do and move on. There must be some peace for someone like yourself of literally being a, a warrior in a garden, right? Like it's finally time to, Oh, what we should, we should reset the timer or something there, but like, it's finally time to like relax and live your life. Right. Yeah. Well, well see the thing is like, I could say with me and Shogun, I don't know how long Shogun's been competing for as an athlete, but I've been competing since I was 16 mm. and and I started late in wrestling. So I had to I had to go balls to the wall to catch up. And me going that hard had a toll on my body. Um, Shogun, I don't know when he started kickboxing. I don't know when he started doing MMA or grappling, you know, at a hard, you know, but I'm pretty sure the way he trains now is different than the way he trained back then. You know, so I'm pretty sure he might he might make adjustments, but he's not as active. He might he probably fights what he probably fights what once or twice a year now. Yeah, yeah so right, he's not He's, you know, he's just, you know, just taking his fights as he sees them. Now, I, I, I wanted to ask you, so I, we're going to go right back to the beginning here. Your mom was a very big fan of academics and you were in the Head Start program as a child. You were pushed a lot. How did your mom feel about you not going into academics, but instead of going into athletics? Well, <clears throat> that, that didn't happen until I was older, you know, um, and uh, I... It, it, she had no other option, you know, because like, what else was I gonna do? Like, I I was I try to keep up my uh, my academics, but athletics I feel like was a way for me, honestly. So, you know, everybody has, has a different path, and I felt like me just being a better athlete and trying to maintain my grades to the best of my possibilities would be my path to making it somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and it's worked out extremely well. You've toured the world, you've fought all over the world, you've performed in wrestling, and now you're a coach uh, at ATT, uh, and you've led some people to championship victories. How how do you like coaching? I think you've kind of been in a, a semi-coaching role for most of your career, right? In, in a sense, yeah. You know, I was fighting and coaching guys, um, working with people. I was a, like a, a integral part of people's camps with game plans and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I, I always coached and fought at the same time. But now, you know, I, I understand coaching. I understand trends. Like, I feel like I'm more of a tactician than more instead of a coach. I teach tactics more than coaching, you know. Yeah, Definitely. awesome. So you've got, uh, you got Johnny Eblen, um, obviously middleweight champion, um, better to at the moment. Um, and... Yeah, it's quite nice. Yeah, you got like a little loop. Yeah, you beat Gay God, uh, win the Strike Force Championship, and he's done the same. Um, how do you rate his chances against the just the just anyone? Um, for example, Alex Pereira. I think he beats Alex. I like Alex. Alex is a tough dude. Alex yeah. is cool. I like him. But yeah. I think Johnny's the best uh, middleweight in the world. You know, <clears throat> um, Israel Adesanya is a great fighter. And I, I think he's one hell of a fighter, great striking, um, good takedown defense. But I think Johnny's chain wrestling would be the key. And his volume, he's hard nosed. He has different styles, different um, tempos, different rhythms, different stances. So, you know, and he, there's a lot he hasn't shown yet. And I guess, you know, it's up to him to show it. I know what he can do, I've seen what he can do. And, uh, um, other people, um, they'll know what he'll, what he can do, and they'll figure out, find out about his capabilities uh, in the future. I guess when he has more opportunities to um, to shine with that belt. No, he's he's hugely skilled, and I feel like his style would work very well against an Alex Pereira or an Israel Adesanya. But you you were you're at the AT at the ATT gym every day. Who else do we need to know about uh, that, that we need to keep an eye on? Is there some hot prospects that you would recommend? Man. Um, Dalton Rasta. Um, well, some of you, like, you, know, you, talk, you, want, you you want prospects of guys that are good, I forget. Because mm -hmm. there's plenty, like Alex Shabley, okay. um, JJ Wilson, um, Sidney Outlaw's tough. Yeah. You know, he's a contender. Um, 
Hanato Amoikano. Of course. Yeah. Uh, oh, so good. He's real, he's real good. And, and the Tan Show, Tiago Moyes. And a personality as well, man. <laughs> Grant Dawson. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, I don't know, um, Isis for Beak, um, Saeed, um, Saeed Salma. It, the gym is just full of stars, to be to be honest. Uh, Marcelo Gom, uh, Heenan Ferreira just joined the gym. Damn. You know? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and, and think about this. So you got Heenan Ferreira. Man. Then you then you have um, um, you had um, Nemkov was there, and then nah. Madolski was there as well. So think about that. Then Heenan Ferreira. Joe Santos, you have all these beasts in the gym, and yeah, it's 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 the it, headway factor. You have you have uh, also you have uh, um, Pavlich, Sergey Pavlich. Yeah, he's there. Oh my goodness, man. Yeah, you, you have you have um, Biggie Boy. He's yep. there. Jeez. Yeah. This gym is like a cheat code. It's actually unfair of how many advantages of like on sparring day, all these people are getting that much better because they're facing world class opponents constantly. It is ridiculous how good the ATT gym is. Yeah, um, it, it is a cheat code um, and also a one-stop shop because we have great coaches there, um, a great staff, great mm -hmm. facilities, great programs and classes. Um, it's a one-stop shop. And um, everybody gets along. You have all sorts of different styles and different looks. People from all over the world are there competing and training. No one's being an asshole, trying to knock no one out. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you know, Demir Ismagulov showed up two weeks ago. Um, he's fighting um, um, Armin Saryukin um, in That's two man, weeks. Man. Yeah. It's a good you know, fight. It yeah, and, and I was watching him spar with Alexander Shabali, and that was some high-level stuff. Like, those two were two of the best 155-pounders in the world. Damn. Well, you're a huge asset to the team, man. I mean, clearly. Um, but like, I, I heard this recently. I'm not too sure if this is correct or not. You were invited to uh, train with Glover for the year he fight. Is that correct? Yeah, well, a while, me and Glover are cool. So Glover always reaches out to me. And I tell him, you know, what I think. Uh, and we just share ideas. You know, um, he's he's, talk, he's um, mentioned, mentioned that. Me, he spoke to me about going out there. It's been brought up. It's been mentioned. And all we have to do is wait, sit and wait. But right now, that's canceled because it seems like um, Yuri is injured. Yeah. So um, now Glover has to train for another opponent. If it's Jan, let it be Jan. If it's Ankolaev, let it be Ankolaev. Both men are tough, and both men can can could possibly beat Glover. So Glover has to be ready for either man. I know yeah. he's beat Jan, but Jan still has that power. Yeah. He's hard nosed. And he can wrestle, he can grapple. And yeah. you know, Uncle Uncle Liev is elusive, solid, solid uh, wrestling, solid takedown defense. He has good striking. He's quick. Uh, just both men are problems, you know. So I'm just hoping that Glover gives a chance to fight either man at full health. Yeah, I mean, it's a very strange situation, you know, um, with Yuri immediately vacating the belt. Um, you know, he, he he just said, look, I don't want I don't want to be holding the line. Like, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, it's quite a rare thing to do because most of the most of these days you've got a champion. He's injured. Even if it's for a year, he'd be like, look, um, you know, you guys could have. I'm still the champion. You guys fight for the interim. Mm, I think it must have been that, that much that series of an injury. For him to be like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be out for a while. Just take it. Because some people, they'll be like, you know what? Like, you know, they, they'll they think they're Wolverine. And uh, they'll be like, yeah, oh, amputated leg? Oh, I'll yeah. be back in two weeks. You know, broken <laughs> neck. <laughs> 72 hours. <laughs> Heart attack? <laughs> 36 hours. You know, but... In America, you know, if we, if we get hurt, we try to make it seem like we will heal faster than, you know, like we're mutant. But we'll, we'll speak, you know, talk about our injuries. And they'll be brutal. They'll be drastic. They'll be bad. But we'll try to come back as fast as possible. A lot of us. Well, especially my time and age. Like, you know, I try to come back way too soon for my ACL surgeries. Man, man, 
I was going to say, actually, MMA might have been one of the safer careers that you were in because professional wrestling and uh, collegiate wrestling are renowned for people pushing through injuries and fighting or competing well before their time. It, compared to pro wrestling and collegiate wrestling, is MMA actually safer for, for a person's body? Yeah, because you have, you have more outs in MMA. Mm, gotcha. In, 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 in wrestling, you get pinned or you get, you get beat. MMA, you can get knocked out, decision, um, or submitted. So yeah. you have more outs. Yeah, that, uh, that makes sense. Let me ask you another question here, because I remember this from years back, and we were talking about it before you came on as well, but you were one of the guys working before the Dagestani takeover that we're seeing today. You were, it's not me when I'm wrong. I might be misremembering, but you were in Russia working with these guys like over a decade ago. Is that right? I wrestled there. I wrestled against those guys. So some of these guys you see, some of these guys you see fighting right now, I know they're coaches because like I competed against them. So like years ago, MMA on MMA Junkie, they asked me where the next group of fighters would be from, and I told them Dagestan because I was there. Damn, that's insane. That's and I think you said like these guys aren't. They're not playing sport. These guys are like wrestling for their lives, right? Well, they wrestle. Like when I went there, I noticed that you know. There were soccer fields, there were basketball courts, but on the courts, no one shot. Everyone just wrestled or they ran and like they played a, ta a tackle, a version of tackle basketball. And then uh, um, all I saw was boxing gyms, kickboxing gyms, sambo yeah. gyms, and wrestling gyms. That's all you saw. And everyone, yeah, everyone there was either a sportsman or they're a mafia. <laughs> <laughs> really? Sportsman yeah. or mafia? Yeah. That's sportsman or mafia. That is freaking wild, man. You think with the Dagestan takeover, I mean, I feel like it is almost a takeover. You, you've got, you're getting multiple champions in multiple divisions, uh, multiple promotions in MMA now. Um, do you think it's here to stay? Do you think it's just a phase? It's just a phase. <clears throat> yeah. Because, like, no one's unbeatable. Like, yeah. the person that beats the chicks out, so... Islam's cold. I I think Islam's cold. He looks great. He's tough as nails. Quick, slick, quick, slick. Gets him. He has a great submission game. He has. He can fight. He can grapple. He can fight from range. Mm -hmm. He's hard to hit. <clears throat> he has quick feet. He's pretty unpredictable. Yeah. But the person that beats him is going to be pretty basic. Mm. It's going to be somebody that's going. It's going to be something like. He's probably gonna have something that's exceptional, but he's gonna he's gonna beat him with something solid. Because if you look at Prince Nassim Hamed, if you look at sports, yeah, guys that beat guys that with exceptional talent are usually guys that are just solid with their basics. So Prince Nassim Hamed lost to Barrera. <clears throat> I remember that. Roy Jones lost to Tarver. You know. Floyd not Mayweather flashy had people either. They're not flashy. Yeah. And see, see, and Floyd Mayweather had tougher fights with guys that were solid. Maidana, Kodo, you know. So it, it, like, it's either one thing or the other. A guy that's real solid and stiff, like it's like a Sonny Liston, will get beat like by a Cassius Clay slash Muhammad Ali. You know, yeah. a guy like George Foreman will get beat by a Muhammad Ali. But then Muhammad Ali would get beat by a like a like a like a um Ken Norton, yeah. Who's solid, you know, so like, you know, it, it's you you rarely see two talents two talented guys just fight with all out talent. It'll happen, but usually, when when it comes down to that, a game plan will will shut things down and make things more basic. Well, I think mastering the basics is is the key to a bunch of different to, to this sport, and and it goes across all sports is being great at the basics. And I think the example that we use in MMA is just George Saint Pierre. This guy was he, all he had was the basics. He just was better at that than anybody else. So I'm well, not he, well, nah, he had more than basics. He what, here's the thing, right? To me, like to him more than basics. Um, but the thing is, like to me, because. He, had, he was more advanced with his training. He had a good jab. He trained with boxers. No one else was doing that. He had Superman, lead jab. He trained. So he was a, he was a first, one of the first guys to train with a bunch of high-level guys. You know what I'm saying? But he mastered the basics at those high, at those different levels and figured out a way to chain everything together. Mm. 
know what I'm saying? But but see, but that but the thing the thing is like now that's that's being done by everybody. Hmm. You know, so but but then also but it just comes with in eras, you know, because <clears throat> if you look at the trends, like the trend went from jujitsu yep. to wrestling to Muay Thai mm-hmm. to wrestling to jujitsu to kickboxing to wrestling. Now we're in the M- we're now we're in a toss up phase right now. Yeah. Because everybody does MMA, but their 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 base might be wrestling. Yeah. Well, I think and it's funny. The first one was jujitsu, and I think you were the guy who was like Gracie jujitsu. It just isn't relevant to MMA in this day and age. Well, I didn't say that, but like, okay. Here's the thing. Like here's the thing. Like so, um, everything's relevant. It just depends on who makes it relevant. No move has been done like. Everybody makes it seem like every move's been done, and no, every move's been done once. It's just that now we have social media, so things like are recorded. Mm-hmm. Things are recorded now. Before in the past, like, like for instance, like high level jujitsu, for the most part, is a bunch of basic moves put together in chain, just like boxing, just like wrestling. Everything, like high level, true high level, is when you get a bunch of different basic techniques and chain them in different orders. You know, I'm like, like flashiness is different. Flashiness is just flashiness. Yeah. that That's not high level. That's just flashiness. Mm-hmm. Who, who's, who would you say like is in your opinion, the number one pound for pound fire in the world that does the basics extremely well? I don't know, honestly, because like, I'm not into the pound for pound thing, really. Um, oh, like, really? With, with, oh, I, I am, but I'm not. Because MMA is just so... The media is different. Yeah, it's true. Because it's boxing, popular opinion, isn't it? Because, see, in boxing, like, they don't care about the promotions. The promoters, the promoters or whatever, they're like, whatever. The belts, okay, they know the belts are good. The weight classes, okay. Who's the champions? When will they fight? <clears throat> and MMA is different because they're like, well, if you're not in the UFC, you're nothing. Well, that's not true yeah. because like, Yuri Prochaska came in and straight fresh from Ryzen and yeah, ran, yeah. and ran there and stopped everybody. So I mean, and then the Michael Chandler came fresh from Bellator, fought for the belt. Eddie Alvarez came fresh from Bellator. Wonderful. You know, you know, they're they're, they're uh, uh, Gaethje, Justin Gaethje came from World Series of Fighting. Yeah, and then. You know, they make you run. So it's not really the organization. It's just the, when you're hot. Look at Pitbull. Look at AJ McKee. You yeah. can't say they're not good. Look at Shab- Alexander Shabley. Look at Usman and Megan Randolph. There, there's talent in all these areas, in all these places. It's just, it just comes down to who's hot and who's healthy. Do you think um? Do you think we'll ever see a day, yeah, where? And I don't know if this is a good thing. Um, where you've just got one promotion that literally sucks everything like they just it's under all one one umbrella um it doesn't have to be the UFC. it could just be any organization well, well like you've just got I, everything you got all the world champions it means now nah, i don't think it'd be good here's why without a theater program because how would you know who to market and then some they can protect one guy and make this one guy who has the look that that, that can sell to the masses yeah let's say he's in the last let's say he's an eskimo or let's say he's for a guy from antarctica you know, he they they could get they could put a guy from Antarctica and make him champion and make sure he doesn't face any strikers because strikers could hurt him. And they'll make sure those strikers face other strikers that can't wrestle as good and make sure those other strikers get beat and they'll just maneuver them to a long street just to keep the t- ticket sales high. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like what I wish would happen because everyone it's funny how I remember I remember when um the higher ups in MMA were like we don't want MMA to be like boxing. We want to be different. We don't want extra weight classes. We don't want extra belts. And then all of a sudden, the dreaded interim belt started popping up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's true. <laughs> yeah. That's so, yeah. Actually, like, Bellator had one. UFC had one. So, like, the interim belt. And then, like, like, if you want to see who the best is, then have each organization can have their own belt. And the individual people can go out there and be a belt collector like Kenny Omega did back in back like a few years ago when he went to uh, oh at Austin Aries and others were going to other organizations and winning these belts. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
just like you can, you know in, in boxing you win all the belts you're the ring champion you know imagine having a ring champion for MMA yeah. you have all the belts you're the belt collector and, and there's there's a luster to it of like going out and collecting all the belts right now in kickboxing there's like four major organizations and like if you can get some crossovers between them it would be amazing but MMA we haven't had a really strong like I don't know if it got better than Strike Force. Of like, this was the funnest time. All the fighters were talented, but more than anything, the media treated Strike Force fighters with a ton of respect, right? Like, it, it's changed over time. Well, it's changed over time because <clears throat> back then, <clears throat> like, um, the media is still the media, but I feel like now, like, with the power of the UFC and marketing, you know, like, the, the power, you know, sways things. And it's not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's not a bad thing at all. It's just that, you know, they have the they have the power. They have the strong. They have the strongest the strongest brand, and that's what helps put them on the map. And that's what helps them um, attract the best fighters, or and some of the best fighters, and some of the top fighters, and some of the top talent. But at the same time, <clears throat> this talent spread throughout all organizations. It's just that some organizations get more shine than others. Absolutely, absolutely. Now I'm going to change gears a little bit because um I want to you know just change gears a little bit from MMA uh, chat but I, I'm actually curious um, uh, Mo what is is there any kind of music that you're listening to at the moment because uh, we like to ask that question we're big music nerds ourselves I don't know <clears throat> like, like it's, it varies you know like, um, right now I'm like a, been on the 80s and 90s kick so oh yeah like, you were listening yeah. to like Gap Band Loose Ends, Ozzy Brothers, M. Uh, uh, what's called? Um, oh, I think the thing about this group, um, I'm going blank on this name. Um, they sing Rasputin. Um, Rasputin, yeah, Boney, uh, Boney M. Boney M. Boney M. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. I love that. Yeah, song. Boney M. <laughs> um, Daddy Cool. Yeah, Daddy Cool. I, I, yeah. I was Boney M. Hey. Um, Brown Girl in the Rain. Yeah, yeah, that's a good. Oh, song. Yeah. I, I jammed on the album. It's, you know, I, really I remember there was an interview you did, yeah, 12 years ago uh, with Eddie Sackback, and then he was asking you what music you're into. And you're like, um, I like I like that Southern rap. Is it still the same? Is it still the oh, same? yeah, 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 yeah. There's some rappers out there. Like, but, like, this is, the game has changed. I, I like, yeah, like Beat sucks. King, um, Mexican OT, um, Rest in Peace, but uh, Mo3, who's a great rapper, Yellow Beezy, Fat Boy Freddy, um, I like I still like uh Annalie Chopper and uh um man I'm going blank on because I've been listening to the 90s so much. Yeah. I haven't listened to much else, you know. That's the only music that was why well, I mean old music is the only stuff that's good nowadays, it seems. Well, well not, not not just that, but like I feel like everything's recycled. Even yeah. even the old music it draws inspiration from the past. Yeah. So like if if if, if right now you know, I'm hearing stuff that's been recycled, and, and the, the younger generation is like, "Oh my God, you hear that new beat?" And I'm like, "What is old as hell <laughs> talking about?" Old beat, man. Old beat. I, I love the, the the soul music. Like, I, I it, it's at Motown. I, I was one of my favorites. Like, I really do like the Marvin Gaye era, uh, Tammy yeah. Terrell era. Just like this stuff was so good, and like it sounds fun, and then you hear it, and you're like, "Oh, you're." It, there is so much statement in what's being said. It's been a little while since I've actually heard something in the modern era, and I know that sounds like I'm just patting myself on the back, but like really actually inspired me. Like, there was a few albums I really liked this year, like uh, Danger Mouse, Denzel Curry. But there's not a lot yeah. that, that like really draws in something new, like you said. A lot of it feels kind of recycled. Yeah, I, I man, I I've been listening like because like there's nothing like I'm not out. I'm not, I don't go out, so a lot of shit they rap about I can't relate to. Like, like if there's like a psychedelic rapper that talked about like psychedelic stuff, I'd probably will relate to that. <laughs> We're talking um, about beats, yo. Just rapping yeah, about beats. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, or something. But the thing is, a lot of stuff like going out or like. Popping bottles, I don't be drinking. Yeah, like, all that stuff. Like I can't relate to it. Now, if the beat is cool, I listen to it. But the thing is, now these songs are two minutes long. See, when yeah. I was coming up, songs are four or five minutes long. Yeah, man, what is that? Bro? There are songs now that are like a minute and a half, <laughs> forty-five seconds. Yep. There are you know skits. why? You know why? It's all done on. It's because everything is pushed on TikTok nowadays. It seems TikTok. So you, you just got like a minute, and then you put it in there. And yeah. it's like, that's it, man. That's the that's the song for the day or the song for the month. 
<laughs> it's all pushed on one thing. Is there any movies or TV shows? Yeah, you watch to you watch when you're not when you're not um, training or coaching. Yeah, I watch a lot of TV shows. Crime TV uh, shows. A lot. Um, ah, awesome. The Boys. Yeah, I love that. Invincible. Um, watch Cobra Kai, of course. Um, House of the Dragon. Um, there's gonna be a new Castlevania coming out. All of us yeah, are I didn't dead. Like I didn't like that cartoon so much, you know, the anime. Oh man, the Castlevania was off the chain. Was, he's, he's, I, I think I just watched one episode. I need to. Yeah, yeah, no, no, check it out. It. Watch, no, watch check it out. Man. Don't watch yeah. the first season. Start. Oh, season is it? Two. Don't watch the first season. Yes, because the first season, like, is is slain. But they give oh, you a recap. Season two and on go hard. I'm telling oh, you. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, man. Trust me, I watch TV. I watch my shows. Yeah, I watch these shows, man. Yeah, you, you got me on the boys, man. Boys is awesome. I'm waiting for Willow. They got another boys, another spinoff for the boys. You know, I'm a big Marvel Marvel comic fan. I'm, I'm big in the Marvel comics. The MCU, yeah, but not as much compared to the actual comics itself. Yeah, MCU sucks compared to the comics, man. Let's be honest. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. it, it's not great. It, it's okay. It's not great. So who's your favorite villain? Who's your favorite hero? My favorite villain, yeah, in Marvel. Damn, that's a hard one. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go because I'm a big Spider Man fan. I'm gonna be very boring. I'm gonna just go Green Goblin, and I like Sp uh, and Spider Man is my my hero. And my favorite arc is when I think it was Harry Osborn. He tries to get all the he tries to get the uh, the powers. Uh, he tries to get power oh, yes. for wealth, and then he ends up going crazy or some shit like that. It was a pretty dark one, but um, yeah, I want to go really basic Green Goblin and Spider Man. What about yourself? Man, I got a lot of, I don't know, because the heroes, it changes. It could be Thor, Silver Surfer, Black Panther. Uh, Tim's Deadpool. like, fuck you, man, you Marvel wankers. <laughs> <laughs> he's, like, he's a big DC fan. I am, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a major <laughs> DC fan. I'm sorry. See, no, so, 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 so DC? Yeah. If, if, like, one thing, I, I'm a DC fan. If, like, Black Adam to me, they, they fumbled. Because oh, here's yeah, the thing, right? Here's what if I was a DC director, if I was if I were in part, charge of DCU, I would go the Brett, the route of the Joker. I would go through and have a story of the villain because heroes aren't needed until villains pop up. So I would show the story, the origin of the villain in each area, and then show the rise of the villain, and then that's that that'll be show that'll show the rise of the damn hero. So you'll have like two, you can have like three or four arcs, you know what I'm saying? Like for phases within that arc. Yeah. Well, and not only that, but with the movie Joker, which was an Oscar nominated yeah. and stuff, one of its strengths was that it didn't have to be attached to the larger universe. Like all they said is make a good movie. No one, like we're not trying to connect it to anything else. And that's where the DC could have an advantage in this movie space. Because clearly they, they're, they're, they, they messed up already with Black Adam. Look, look, Black yeah. Adam, I'm not, I didn't even watch it because like it's like the MCU. Mm -hmm. I can't, like, look, I, okay, Gore the God Butcher. Is one of my favorite villains, right? Yeah. Okay, the MCU did pretty good by Thanos. So I, oh, I yeah. give him that. Yeah, he did. Now, did Doctor good Doom is the other, Mangog and Doctor Doom are my other two villains. But Gore the God Butcher is is that dude. And the way they disrespected that man I in know. this last door disgusted me to the point where I left. I no. left the I I left. I'm really that I bad? It was that it was man, like the necro sword was just a normal sword. All black <laughs> sword is is one of the most powerful, <laughs> most powerful weapons in Marvel, right? It was just a normal ass sword, like a broadsword, and it, it was terrible. And, and like That's amazing nice. casting for it too. Like they they like like it was like five steps forward of like great casting. This is one of the coolest concepts we have in the MCU, and they're like, yeah, we'll give them five minutes of total screen time in this movie. Fucking what? <laughs> Poor execution. It was poorly executed. Um, Gore, just the way Gore looked, he looked like a cancer patient. He yeah. looked like powder. <laughs> he that's why I was like, no, nah, like that's just that turned me off, man. I agree. I agree, man. I feel like the Thor movie, the most recent one of like, as much as I did like Ragnarok, I loved Ragnarok. Love and Thunder could have been better. Uh, there was a lot it could have been better. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever seen Titans? Uh, Titans. Attack on Titan. 
No, DC Titans. He's thinking Titans. No, 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 no. I haven't seen that. This show, it's like it's like a live action show of the Titan Teen Titans. Teen I Titans. Not, I've watched I a little not. bit when a long time. Yeah, it's on it's on HBO Max. It's it's pretty good too. It, I watched that as well. It's pretty good. Okay, but That's, for the most part, DC should either go the route of the villain first or stick to cartoons because. The Justice League, um, the um, the last one, the Justice League with um, Dark, Apoc- yeah. Apocalypse, the one that one, was, yeah, that one was good. That was a favorite, one of my favorite cartoon movies. Like they can't, they can't go wrong for the animation. All but, their animated stuff is so good. Oh, it's great. So it's sad. Great. It's you guys see the, um, you guys see the trailer by any chance of Morbius? Because I like Morbius. I like the story of Morbius, and then it just looks terrible. Like. But, like <laughs> Horrible. More like even with Vil, even with Venom, like, like Venom. I'm like, how could you have Venom without Spider Man? Yeah, yeah, man. That doesn't make the any sense. The thing is, the spider. The reason why Venom has a spider on his chest because Spider Man. Like, so like, how did he get that spider on his chest? So I didn't watch Venom. I boycotted Venom. You know, yeah. I'm not. You know, I just. No watching you know, that. The MCU is kind of. I'm kind of done with it for right now. I'm, yeah. Like, I, I didn't even, like. I'm gonna be real with you. I didn't watch Black Panther. I'm going. I'm going to, but. It's yeah, good. I heard, it was good. I didn't see the second. I, I, heard, one. I heard it was good. good. I heard it's a more origin story, you know. And then like, I'm I'm just I, I want to see something different, you know. Yeah. I, I guess maybe when they do Secret Wars, I watch that, you know, and then go back and watch everything else. But I would say the first movie, Black Panther, it's just it's worth watching just for Michael B. Jordan's performance as Killmonger. Oh my god, <laughs> so yeah. good! It was and, brilliant. Like you almost root for him at the end. I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> this the story made sense. <laughs> and Shang Chi, Shang Chi was pretty good, but it got corny yeah. at times. It, but it, it it was good at the time because it, for some reason there was nothing out, nothing good at that time. But it was funny, action packed, but kind of corny. No, and I agree. I think I think Phase Four of the MCU, like it's been for people just younger than us. Of like a lot of the TV shows, a lot of the movies just skewed a little bit younger. Like, am I wrong in getting like? The tone is different. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Um, yeah. Thank you. I think Moon Knight was good. Moon Knight I love was Moon good. Knight. Moon Knight was good. Man, that was but fun. WandaVision ended up finishing strong. Um, Loki was was good. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, I don't know what they're going to do, man. Like, honestly, I I'm, I like where the comics are going. So I'm going to stick with the comics. Years, man, I think. Yeah, and it's... <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, okay. But we got to wrap up here. So, Mr. Muhammad Lawal, I hugely appreciate your time. Thank you so much. But you get the last word here. Talk out. Talk us on out of here. Shout out anyone you need to shout out. Sponsors. Thank anyone you need to thank. You talk us on out of here. You get the last word, sir. Oh, man. Like, first of all, I want to thank y'all for having me on here and being part thank of the show. Thank you, bro. And uh, thank everybody, America Top Team, all my people, everyone doing something positive. Um, that's it, pretty much. Everybody doing something positive, man. That's, that's everybody out there in the world. You know, keep it simple. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, All man. Right. Take it easy.